Hi everyone, it's Logan here again. I wanted to bring you an update on how the motor assembly is coming. So, uh, I did end up finishing the new stator. And for the most part, it's exactly the same as the old stator, but with a couple small improvements. Uh, one of the main improvements, let's see if we can focus here. Come on, focus. There we go. Uh, don't know how well this is going to come across in the video, but I actually rounded the edges of the teeth here. Uh, there's a couple reasons I did that. The main reason is because the way this one was set up, uh, the coils end up getting cut into by the square edge of the stator teeth. And what was happening is as it was bending around, it was cutting into the insulation and it was creating an, en uh, an electrical contact with this. And now current could flow either from one coil to another or different parts of a coil and it was bad. Uh, the second thing is that by rounding this it allows me to use ever so slightly less wire which will save me overall both in terms of resistance and in terms of the amount of wire that I'm using. So slightly less heat, slightly higher current. It'll be minuscule but every little bit helps. So I'll tell you the next steps of this here. Before I put the wire on here um, now, what most elect uh, professional electric motors are going to do is put in a, 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 an electrically insulative paper, basically, inside here. Stretches from here, down here, and up here. And then they wrap the coils around that. Uh, and that's all well and good. The problem is it's hard to get it to stay as you're wrapping it. And when you're doing it in a, with a machine, it's, well, it's, it's a lot easier. What I did on this one was I actually used some glue right in here. But the problem with the glue is that it is also an insulator to heat and you want some heat to be able to flow out of the coils into the stator a little bit at least uh, because you want to get rid of some extra heat in the wire. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do there yet but you can see this is all made of individual pieces of silicon steel and I use silicon steel if you haven't seen my my previous video because it is resistant to both uh, electrical current and uh, the hysteresis effect. So what happens is two things as current flows around the, the wire it induces a current inside each one of these. Uh, and so by having them not connected A you get less resistance or you get, I'm sorry you get more resistance overall and therefore less current, less wasted current in eddy currents and also hysteresis effect is the specific material which has less to do with uh, how many layers you have. If I made it all as one big thick piece, A, it would be a lot harder to cut, although a lot quicker. Um, and also it would end up wasting more current and therefore more um, torque and horsepower and so forth. It would be wasted versus going towards actually moving the tire. So the step I'm on now is I just uh, cut this and I'm starting to shave it down here. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, this is going to be the shaft. It's just a piece of uh, 3 4 inch thick steel pipe I got at Menards. Or if you're not from the, middle, the Midwest, um, Home Depot, I would have it too. And right now, I'm having to shave it down because if you look, it doesn't fit into the bearing. There's actually a reason for that. It's not a design flaw. In a professionally made motor, the shaft is going to be slightly too big and the bearing is going to be slightly too big, or slightly too small, uh, because you want them to fit perfectly tight. So what they actually do is uh, they heat up the inside of the bearing so it expands, makes it a little bit bigger, and potentially cool down the shaft. And they slip them together, and then they allow them to go back to room temperature so that it gets a nice tight fit that always spins with no wobble. Uh, as this is a prototype, I won't be doing that, and also well, my refrigerator or freezer couldn't cool it down <laughs> to get it cold enough to actually fit them together, and I don't want to heat this up in fear of actually wrecking some of the, the grease that's inside there. So what I'm doing instead is uh, just grinding it down just a tiny, tiny bit. I'm talking maybe a sixty-fourth of an inch. I grind it maybe, you know, two times around, two turns, and then I come back and test it. 
because I want it to just barely fit in there. Uh, it doesn't go all the way on yet. It goes on just a little ways. I've got the markings on here. I don't know if you can actually see them. But the uh, I'm going to have to uh, grind this down to about here. This is where the bearing is going to sit uh, up against this line here. Then the stator coil will be sitting right here. And then the other side, the other bearing, will be sitting right over here on top of this. Now this hole is going to allow the wires to flow through the shaft. Uh, just like you can see, it's coming out there. Now the reason you have to do that is my particular type of motor. This is a hub motor, uh, same as what's used in, say, your CD-ROM drive. Uh, this is a much more powerful version, obviously, than your CD-ROM drive. But it has to come out the shaft because this whole apparatus is going to be spinning. There's the magnets in there. And so this is going to be spinning. This is going to be staying still. So if it were to route through the wheel, it would get all, you know, messed around, twisted up, and it wouldn't go very far. So it has to go through the shaft. Now, ordinarily, now I know this is one of my early prototypes I just quick, very quickly made out of wood. Uh, ordinarily, because the coils on a regular motor, the coils are on the outside, so they don't have to go through any shaft. Um, but so this gives the added issue of having to have a shaft that can be hollow in the middle and still strong enough to support everything that you need. But anyway, as a result, it has to go through there. So the way I cut that was actually by using this. I used my Dremel and just a little carbide cutter there. And with a Dremel, you don't have to put much force on it. All I did was basically set it on there and just let it slowly cut through. And once I had a wide enough cut, I made it a little bit, or I should say a long enough cut, I made it slightly wider, and then I took just a regular tungsten carbide cutter bit, just a circular one, not the big wheel, and just stuck it in there and then just kind of made it a little bit bigger. And I will be putting an insulating material, maybe glue or something around here, because you don't want the wires catching on these edges. Uh, I've dulled them down, they're not terribly sharp, but over time it can wear off the insulation. And if it wears off the insulation, then you get shorts going right into the shaft. Now again, you're wasting power, extra heat, could be a shock hazard. So that's the update. That's where I am right now. Uh, as soon as I get this cut down on both sides, then I'm going to end up putting the wire in here. And the one difference with the wire, I think I said in a previous video this was 26 gauge, I was wrong. This was 22 gauge. Uh, I am actually going to be using a 20 gauge wire. Why am I doing that? Well, it does improve the amount of current it can carry. Uh, in a static test, I turned on the current and I measured about 8 to 10 amps of current going through here for about 5 seconds. And after 5 seconds, it was just on the verge of being too hot to touch. So while in motion at full speed, it's not necessarily using 8 to 10 amps uh, in every single coil. It is a lot and it may be on startup and I don't want that. That's just too much heat. Um, these are designed, I mean, coils can be hotter than what we can touch and still be safe. But after only five seconds, uh, I don't want to risk it. So this is a slightly thicker coil, can carry about 50% more current before it gets hot. Plus, I'm going to be putting this in series instead of all parallel. So in this one, I have nine individual coils, and every third one is then connected into one wire so it gets power at the same time. It's a phase, is what they call it. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be going, instead of looping it together in three of them coming together out in parallel, I'm going to be looping it together, then going to the next one, then to the next one. So current flows through all three at the same time on the same loop, uh, if that made any sense. So instead of coming into three at the same time on separate wires, it's going to be going out through the three at the same time on the same wire. By doing this, I'm not increasing overall resistance, but I'm increasing the resistance in series. So I'll have less current uh, and less heat buildup. 
uh, but the wire can support more current overall, so it shouldn't be that much of a reduction, just a little bit. The only downside is that you do get more torque and more horsepower if you have three parallel wires all on the same phase versus one wire per phase. But it's a trade-off, and this is still an experiment. I may end up redoing this anyway. I got my new Hall sensors right here. I got them on eBay. I think it was like 5 bucks for 10 of them or something like that. Um, so these basically turn it on and off whenever they see a magnet, which you can see right here. So I'm going to be setting this up, and then I'm going, going to be comparing to see which, which stator gives the better um, statistics for this motor. But I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the final design here. So, hope you like that. There's going to be a lot more coming as this gets uh, finished here, which will be pretty soon. So, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, you'll want to see how this goes. It's going to be really neat. Thanks for checking this out. Like if you like it. And, of course, have a great day.